my great pleasure to introduce my mentor, my colleague, and my friend, Brian Wandale, the 2022 Proctor Medal awardee. As Steve said, Brian is the Isaac and Madeline Stein family professor at Stanford University, where he holds a primary appointment in psychology and a secondary in electrical engineering. Brian's work has been deservedly recognized by many awards and prizes, including the Trolland Award, the Tillier Award, the Macbeth Prize, Harvard's Oberdorfer Award, and election to the U.S. National Academy of Sciences. I think about Brian's work, his contributions to vision are deep and numerous, and a feature of his work is the multidisciplinary approach he brings to his contributions. He began his career using visual psychophysics to study color vision, and uh, using that technique, uh, worked on inferences of his work on neural mechanisms through psychophysics led him to, uh, in the early 1990s, to be a pioneer in the use of functional magnetic resonance imaging, functional brain imaging, to study mechanisms in the visual system in human visual cortex. And uh, in this regard, he had to develop various methods and tools which he shared widely in support of open science. In addition, another feature of Ryan's work is that in order to link these various approaches, he had to develop Rivers' theory to link across them and implement those in terms of computations that explicitly embody various forms of theory. Together then, those features of his work have led him into the world of engineering, particularly image systems engineering, where he's both developed color image metrics that are widely used to evaluate image quality and worked on uh, sensor design using inspiration from the visual system. That work, in turn, has stepped back into his modeling work. As I mentioned, Brian is a pioneer in the use of functional magnetic neuroimaging, and he'll tell you about that work today, so I won't go into it in any detail. But I can't resist showing you this picture of a magnet that was used in those early studies at Stanford, and in particular the display. Now, at that time, uh, if you wanted to do work with a uh, near magnet and high field strength, you couldn't just buy a display that would do it. So they had to strip all the ferrous metal out of this one. And you can see the resulting duct tape holding it together here so that they could do their early experiments. Before we get to Brian's remarks, I do want to talk to about him a little bit as a person. He's one of the biggest hearted people that I know. And his love, caring, and support begin with his family. Here's a picture of Brian and his wife and colleague, Joyce Farrell, when their son Adam was young. Adam's grown up now, just completing um, his res residency in surgery. And here are the empty nesters taking one of their regular walks. Brian's care and support, though, extends beyond, um, beyond his family. He's a fantastic mentor. Uh, Brian and Joyce regularly open their home, their lab mates, their lab personnel, and their colleagues to celebrate everything from student milestones or just because of visitors in town. And these gatherings not only are uh, full of good cheer, but also times when the group talks about the latest in science and ideas. And I have to say, I've been to a number of these events and feel that I've learned much about science just from those informal discussions at Brian's house that I have from many other sources. More generally, Brian is highly supportive of his trainees. He's generous with his time. And I and the others who train with him count ourselves I was very lucky to have had him as a mentor. I do want to tell one story that I think is an aspect of Brian that really is key to his scientific success, but this is a non-science story. And that's that Brian is really always open to thinking about new ideas. So one day in the late 1980s, Brian got a phone call from a Hollywood casting director named Nancy Foy, who had found her way to it through a fairly unlikely chain of personal connections. Nancy was looking for some, quote, real physicists to play roles in a major motion picture dramatizing the Manhattan Project, this movie, in fact, Batman and Little Boy, uh, which was directed by Roland Joffney and, and it stars various actors you may have heard of, including Paul Newman, Laura Dern, John Cusack, and others. Nancy asked Brian whether he could direct her to his colleagues in the physics department at Stanford so she could recruit them to uh, play a part in the movie, and, and he did do that, but um, he's quick and he recognized and was open to uh, the idea that had presented itself. So before I hung up the phone, he said, well, you know, uh, we do a kind of physics in our lab, but well, maybe you consider us for those parts. And uh, Nancy was a little quizzical and said, more or less, uh, what kind of physics is that? And without missing a beat, Brian replied, psychophysics, of course. Well, one thing really did lead to another in that regard, and Brian's openness to that idea led to him being the real star of that movie, which you can still watch on YouTube. Here he is in one of the scenes that dramatizes the beginning of the Dragon's Tale, and he's in several other scenes there. 
showing off his talent as an actor in addition to as a, as a scientist. So with that, I'd like to ask Brian to come up and uh, please join me in welcoming him as he takes us uh, from uh, stories about ideas to his lecture. Human visual cortex. 